I would like to introduce Janine Pyard from the Center Senior Center Volunteer um, from the Encore Experiences in Montgomery County. Janine. Thank you, Veronica. You're welcome. So I volunteer my church, but was looking for another opportunity because I'm a real estate agent and most of my appointments are nights and weekends. Uh, and I have time sometimes during the day. Um, also working from home can be isolating and I wanted more social interaction. Many years ago, I was at Encore Experiences in Harneysville playing bingo, which was open to the public. Uh, I noticed a flyer asking for volunteers. I spoke to a woman who said they needed help in the kitchen, which posed a problem because I don't cook. She said uh, that they did have a chef, but they really needed help with uh, serving and cleaning up after lunch. That I can do. Um, I've been serving lunch on Thursday at Encore for over six years. Um, my shift is about an hour and a half. Uh, I serve meals, I clean up, I restock um, the supplies. Um, I enjoy getting to meet so many different people uh, and look forward to seeing not only the members each week, but also the other volunteers and catching up on their lives. I've gotten to know the members so well that if I come on a different day, if they need more help. Uh, many of the members ask me if it's Thursday. Uh, helping at Encore is so important to me that when I have a real estate client who wants to make an appointment, if it's on a Thursday, I always make sure that it's after my shift. Uh, vol volunteering at Encore has also shown me how important the Senior Center is to members. I've seen the difference Encore makes in people's lives. Uh, sometimes when new members arrive, they're very shy, especially if they're by themselves. However, as they get to know more people, they become more outgoing. Uh, and I certainly wish more seniors took advantage of what Encore has to offer because social act interaction is so important. Um, uh, of course, many of us felt that loss during COVID when activities uh, were shut down and our daily lives uh, were disrupted. Um, and after, um, you know, the, the year, the year and a half that it was shut down, we were really overjoyed to be back. Um, and again, as I said, cut, catching up on everybody's lives. Um, of course, what usually happens when you help others is that it benefits you too. Um, helping at Encore provides me an opportunity to be of service, uh, allows me to be part of the community, and gives me that socializing that I was really craving. Um, I found that if you want to help, there's always someone to me need that needs help. Um, I would encourage anyone looking to volunteer to see what Encore or similar organizations have to offer. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. Thank you, Janine. There were some great points to keep in mind when you're looking to volunteer. Okay, next up we have Louise Shaheen. She is a, a Senior Center volunteer from the Peak Center in Montgomery County. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm, I thank the uh, volunteer recognition support that we are getting today. It is fantastic. And how did I get involved? I've been a member for of PEAK for 20 years, and uh, when I was early 60s, I thought to myself, what am I going to do when I retire? I've been a nurse for f over 50 years. I can't just stop. I've got to keep busy, and I've got to serve my community. But one day, I was reading the North Bend Reporter, and I saw PEAK Center. Then I read what they did and the, all the activities that they offered to the community. And two things hit my mind. One was yoga, and that was for a personal need. And the other one was Red Hats group. And I had heard about them. And I thought, that's a social group. I could go there, get involved with that, meet people, and see where it goes from there. Well, it went to a lot of places. Um, it helped me get involved with members at the Peak Center. Uh, it got me involved in teaching. It got me involved in uh being a greeter or 
all sorts of different things, and I'm still doing it. Um, I, some of the things I did start there, I, I became president very shortly uh, after we dissolved the Red Hat group. Uh, the Red Hat people heard that we only had one person paying dues, and if we didn't all pay dues, we couldn't have a society. So we became the peekaboo ladies of the Peak Center. And what we got going, we have um, a raffle basket that we did two, three times a year, and we make maybe 70 to $100. And we would donate that back to the Greater Israel, Hollisville, North Penn Senior Services that would go to operating both Encore and Peak. Um, we organize monthly luncheons. We would go out to restaurants and sometimes we do catered ones in. Um, we encourage um, increasing uh, our monthly meetings. So more people came. When I first took it over, hardly anybody came. And now we have 15 to 20 people who come to our meetings every month, which is great. Um, the other thing, uh, I became a board member and uh, it was important for me to keep the board informed of the needs of the seniors and the seniors informed of what the board is doing for them. Uh, my personal volunteer work over the years has been a I help serve meals, set up, clean up whenever is needed, whenever, one, one or two days a week. I finally did retire when I was 73, so now I have full time uh, to uh, spend giving uh, a lot of time to the Peak Center. Uh, uh, we do answer the phone. We support the staff when they need extra help. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, we keep, what was so important is that when uh, we were shut down, how we kept the communications open. Um, the most memorial, memorable program I did, I taught a class to help seniors enhance their memory. Because have you ever gone through, where did I leave my cell phone? Where did I leave my keys? Oh, where did I park my car? Well, this program was uh, developed by a Dr. Um, Gary Small from UCLA and a uh, representative from UCLA came out and gave us a two-day orientation how to present this program. It's a scripted program and we uh, met uh, we used to have 20 people come, and we went outside our own campus. We went to Doylestown, War uh, Warrington, Hapro, and it was so popular. People loved it. Uh, we ha They had a book. We gave them uh, handouts. We did have to charge some money for it because of the, the expense we put into it, but it was extremely popular. And I know myself today, if I follow all those little association things, I, I don't forget where I do anything, but I, sometimes I forget to do the little tricks you're supposed to do. Um, the other areas I've done as a board member is uh, fundraising, strategic planning. And one of the things in strategic planning is what I'm very interested in is culture expansion for our center. And uh, we uh, really have a, a, a very strong program. We meet monthly and working on that. The biggest challenges I've had since I've been there, I was a president for about seven years because of the pandemic and we didn't have any election, uh, was uh, being shut down. How can we keep going? Well, one of the things we did, uh, Heather Struthers, our site manager, uh, got us on Zoom and we had many, many Zoom meetings, classes, educational, and we could go, go on and chat and I could run a, a members council meeting. I could tell them, what the council is doing, what the board's doing. They were, you know, kept them informed because the biggest fear they had was the center was never going to open again. And my biggest job is to support them that this was not going to happen. Um, uh, we did a lot of email communications. Um, we had one member, Kathy Leahy, who, uh, Suggest that when things lightened up a bit, we could go outside. We didn't have to wear a mask. We'd go to a place called Fisher's Park. We'd all bring a chair and we would sit. We could have like a, a you know, a staff meeting and I could tell everybody what was going on. Uh, or we would invite um, our uh, director of 
of the of the common you also give a talk to us but we would sit there in our uh chairs six feet apart and just chat about nothing and it was really very good so and we could also reassure that we were going to get back together and we did um I mean, uh, for the future what i see i see us to keep growing our developments getting more volunteers uh involved because what i one of the things i do as a greeter i often meet new people and i give them our information our newsletters and i encourage them about how they can also become uh, volunteers and i introduce them to members and show them exactly some of the activities they're actually doing um one of the other things we're going to do is uh Lansdale has a Mardi Gras parade which uh they had shut down for the pandemic we are going our we hope to start it go back in November and it's the first Saturday it's the Saturday before Thanksgiving and what we have done in the past when the Peak Center uh marches in it uh we have a banner and then someone carries a um a book saying they belong to the book club someone brings uh a craft that they've done in a craft show uh yoga mats a show that we do have moga the yoga this shows to the, the community this is some of the things that go on at the peak center and we hopefully if they themselves are interested maybe they have family members that would be interested in joining and helping us uh carry on to meet the needs of seniors um and there's one little story i'd like to share with you that happened we had uh, one of our members moved uh up from florida she had family here but she did not know a soul so on we got her daughter got her on zoom she met us all through zoom and she was oh so thrilled then when we went to fisher's park she came and met us in person and then several months after that we finally got into the center that woman has become one of our strongest volunteers and now is president of our members council so that's, that's a real plus story to how we recruited someone and we're very blessed to have that and uh, i thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak to you all today and uh, have a good day